Okay, so let us start from where we left off yesterday. So we have already solved the third exercise, uh, but there is a remark at the end of the exercise that I wanted to make. Uh, so in the exercise, we have proved the general form of the binomial theorem in a ring, in a general ring. But in particular, if R is commutative, then the ordinary binomial theorem holds in R and in this regard one can interpret the result of exercise 714 from Tau's analysis 1 oh, with x and y from the ring. So what this exercise uh, says is that it's just the ordinary binomial theorem that if x and y are real numbers and n is a positive integer then x plus y whole bar n whole so and so. You already know what it is. So we can interpret this result uh, or the solution to this exercise with x and y now being ring elements, not real numbers. And the solution goes through. It's just uh, exactly same. Okay, so here the uh, solution to the third exercise ends. So now we look at the fourth one. If x belonging to R or every sorry every element, if every x belonging to R satisfies this x square is equal to x then prove that r is commutative a ring in which every element x satisfies x square equal to x is it has a such rings have a name is called a boolean ring named after of course the mathematician george bull uh, whom we have already come across previously so that means this exercise asks us to show that Boolean rings are commutative. So let's see how this goes. Let x and y be any ring elements. Then we have x, y, x minus x, y is equal to x y x minus x y whole square using this hypothesis square of every element is the element itself so this can be written as f r this is what it means x y x minus x y now we multiply term by term x y x x, y, x plus x, y, x minus x, y plus 
माइनस एक्स वाई एक्स वाई एक्स प्लस माइनस एक्स वाई माइनस एक्स वाई वेर वी हैव केयरफुली रिटन द माइनस साइंस अलोंग विद द एलिमेंट्स आफ्टर द आफ्टर द दो साइंस दैट्स बिकॉज इन ए रिंग we have already seen this a minus b means a plus minus b that's how we should interpret a minus b that's the meaning of a minus b okay now the first term of course is x y x whole square the second term in place of that i am writing minus x y x x y In place of the third term, I am writing minus x y x y x. In place of the fourth one, I am writing x y x y. What have I done here? The thing is that if if you recall, in the ring we have already proved that if a and b are any two elements, then we have these identities. Minus a times b is equal to a times minus b, which is equal to minus a b. That's what we have used in manipulating the second and third terms. In the fourth one, we have actually used this one. Minus a times minus b is equal to a b. That's what we have used. Okay. So now what do we get? This becomes Using the hypothesis that we have, x y x whole square becomes x y x. Now, looking at this term carefully, this becomes equal to x y x square y. Like that, the third term becomes x y whole square x, and the fourth one, of course, is x y whole square. In writing the second and third terms like this, we have used the fact that multiplication is associated in the ring. Okay, so this becomes x by x minus. Now, x square becomes x, like that. X by x square becomes x by. Right. So x by x minus. This is. Nothing but x y whole square minus x y x plus x y. So again, one final term we use the hypothesis: square of every element equals the element itself. So you can see that this becomes zero. X y x minus x y x minus x y plus x y, which implies. Which implies x y x is equal to x y because this is equal to zero. Similarly, one can prove that x y x minus y x. Which is equal to x y x minus y x whole square is equal to zero, which which would imply x y x is equal to y x. Hence, x y now becomes x y x, which is also equal to y x. Thus, R is commutative.
and here the solution ends. Okay, now let's look at the fifth one. So what does this one say? If R is a ring, merely considering it as an abelian group under its addition because a ring is an abelian group under the addition that it has we have defined in chapter 2, that means in group theory, what is meant by Na, where A belongs to R, A is a ring element and N is an integer. Okay, so then that's what we already have. We already know what N A means. Prove that. A and B are ring elements and N and M are integers, then NAMB is equal to NMAB. That's what we have to prove. Okay, so first of all, we have to see what the exercise means. Okay, we have to make sense of what this symbol NA means. And for that, we need to go back to root theory. Although we have not presented root theory uh, formally yet, we will do that soon. Uh, but uh, we know these things. Okay, so what we are uh, trying to say here is that suppose you have a group G. So let's have a brief group theoretic discussion. And in that group we have an element small g. And let there also be an integer. N is an integer which can be positive or negative or zero. We want to know the meaning of this power, integral power, g to the power n. Now, this meaning has been defined in group theory uh, separately for non-negative n's and negative n. For non-negative n, the meaning is this. g to the power 0 is defined to be equal to the, to the identity. And once one has this, one can then define g to the power n for positive values of n recursively like this. g to the power n plus 1 is defined to be either g to the power n g or g g to the power n. No matter what definition, okay. And this is, this works for all non-negative integers n. No matter which one uh, one uses, uh, ultimately we will get the same element g to the power n plus 1. For example, if I want to use this definition to know the meaning of g to the power 1, then you can see that this can be written as g to the power 0 plus 1. So now I have this element in place of n, I have 0. So using my definition, I can use this one or that one 
you will soon realize why they give the same unit, at least in this case. In general also they give the same unit, it can be proved. So this becomes g to the power 0 g. g to the power 0 by definition is e. Now in the group e g means g. So g to the power 1 means g. Like that, if I want to know g square, you can see here that instead of this, had I used this one, I would have got the same g. Then this is g to the power 1 plus 1. Now, taking this as my definition, I can write this as g to the power 1 g. But g to the power 1 I have already found, it is g. So g square means g, g. And that's what we expect also. g cube will mean uh, three g's, like that. So this recursive definition defines g to the power n for all non-negative integers n. Now we go to the negatives. If n is negative, then g to the power n is defined to be either g to the power minus 1 to the power minus n or g to the power minus 1 means inverse of g or g to the power minus n to the power minus 1. Okay. And these two things now make sense because minus n is now positive because n is negative minus n is positive and we already know the meaning of positive integral power. So this is the positive integral power minus n power of the group element g inverse. This is the minus n power of the group element g and whose inverse we have taken. Any one you can uh, choose to be your definition of g to the power n when n is negative and that will give you the same element. Okay. Now with this definition, now after this uh, there is one more point. You see, in generally in group theory, if we don't know whether the group is abelian or not, we use the multiplicative notation in writing the elements and the binary operation of the group, in which instead of writing, say the group is there, there is a binary operation, instead of writing for g1 and g2, two elements in the group. Instead of writing g1 star g2, we simply write g1 g2 for notational convenience. We don't have to keep on writing star again and again. But in particular, if this star is abelian, then in place of star or in place of this nothing, this um, convention of writing nothing, we write plus which actually is not ordinary addition but the operation in the group element, uh, sorry, operation in the group. The fact that we are writing plus here indicates that the operation is commutative, that is the group is an abelian group. And the same element will now be written like this. And in this context of abelian groups, the power g to the power n is just simply written as ng. This is the notation. They mean precisely the same thing. And that's what we have here. But what is the underlying abelian group here? See here, considering it, considering the ring merely as an abelian group under addition because a ring has two operations. The first part consisting of r and the addition is an abelian group. In that abelian group, we have to interpret these things, n, a, m, b, etc. Now, with this understanding, having understood this much, we then have to prove this. Okay. So, let us now start the solution.
uh, we will have to use induction in one way or another, but in what way? I think I will need to prove something before the actual induction. Let us first prove this A times MB is equal to MAB. Okay, this let us just first prove this one. That is, we are uh, okay, we will see what we are proving later. First of all, we want to prove this. We first prove it for non negative integers in and For that, we apply induction on F. So, our first value of M is M equal to 0. We have a times 0 b. Let me first write the stress and I will justify them. A times 0 b is a 0 which is equal to 0 which is equal to 0 a b and that's it. 0 a b. Okay, so what are, uh, what is it that I have done here? You see now our m is 0. Now, what is 0 AB in this additive group? Let's go back to that. In this additive group, 0 AB I said, not 0 B. 0 B means nothing but B to the power 0. And B to the power 0 according to our definition in the group is the identity element in this group. And what is that? That is the 0 element in the ring. Note the difference between this 0 and this 0. These two zeros are the ordinary integer 0. But this is the 0 element in the ring. So that means 0b is the 0 element in the ring. And we have already proved in a previous result that in a ring, any element times 0 element is equal to the 0 element. And that is again equal to this because this is also equal to a b to the power 0 and which according to our new notation is 0 a b. So these two zeros are the zero elements in the ring and these two zeros are ordinary integer 0. Okay. So this is the basis for our induction. Our result is true for m equal to 0. Hence, the result is true for m equal to 0. As in, that the result is for some non-negative integer m. That means this is equal to this first sum m, which where m is a non-negative integer. Then a times m plus 1 b. This is equal to 
a times m b plus one d, which is equal to a times m b plus b. This is equal to a times m b plus a b. That equals m times a b plus a b, which is nothing but m plus one a b. Or should I write one more step? In place of a b, I can write um, one a b. So m plus one a b. So here we have written many things. So what are the uh, what what are the steps and what are the justifications? You see, first of all, we look at the first step. M plus one B in our additive group in the ring is nothing but B to the power M plus one. And according to one of uh, one law of exponent, this is nothing but B to the power M B. Now b to the power m in our additive notation is mb and b of course is b or I can write b to the power 1. So mb and b to the power 1 is 1b one and since my notation is additive I have mb plus 1b because now my binary operation is plus. So that's how m plus 1b is mb plus 1b. Okay. Then, then what have I done after that? In place of 1b, I have written b. How? Because 1b in the additive group in the ring is b to the power 1, which we have already seen uh, just now. That is, that is equal to b. So in place of 1b, I have written b. After that, I have used the left distributive law in the ring. So a times mb plus a times b. Now a times mb is equal to m times ab. This is coming from our induction hypothesis that the result is true for some non-negative integer m. Okay, a times mb is equal to m times ab. M ab. So just like how 1b is equal to b, AB is equal to 1AB and this is equal to this because MAB plus 1AB in this additive group is actually equal to AB to the power M times AB to the power 1 which according to the law of exponent the first one or you can call it whatever it is you understand what I am talking about a b to the power m plus 1 which in our additive notation is m plus 1 times a b. So that's how I have also proved the result when I have m plus 1 in place of m and this completes my induction. So this completes completes the induction and proves the result. Fine. But that's not what we are after. We want to prove something more generally. This is only one case where if you look carefully, this is uh, this is what we get when we put n equal to 1. So that is only one case. Now we prove the general thing. Next. Oh no. Wait. I, I am actually not done here. Sorry. I have only proved this for non-negative integers m. I still have to prove it for negative integers. Okay. Next. Assume that m is negative.
then a times m b is equal to a times minus minus m b we have to use many brackets to keep track of the things and this is equal to minus a times minus m b we will as usual justify the steps afterwards and this is equal to minus m a b and that is equal to minus minus m a b which is equal to m a b so what have we done here now my a m is negative okay i need space to write some things this solution uh, naturally will be large there is no escaping that okay so what are the steps here let us see group theoretically my group is r plus i keep on writing this because uh, there is no harm in being clear about the things than uh, making mistakes okay we should not make mistakes so a m b is this uh, i should be careful in because now i have multiplication involved in this whole thing right so in that sense have i really justified this one a times m b there is no problem with this part okay so let us just see mb what is happening with mb mb according to our, uh, the group theoretic definition is b to the power m but now m is negative so that means b to the power m is actually b to the power minus m inverse of that okay according to definition right and if i write this back in this definition then i get what is b to the power minus m minus m b and what is inverse of this minus so that's why i have written this in place of m b now in the second step i have two ring elements one is a and the other is minus m times b so it is a times minus something so that is minus of a times that something fine so in the third step here we have used our thing that we have already proved namely the result when the integer is non negative now since m is negative minus m is positive so in place of a times minus m b i can write minus m times a b only thing is that we have a minus sign in front so we are considering additive inverses okay now this again is equal to this because of this that is what we are trying to say is this just like this if we have a, a b in place of m we can write minus minus m a b in the same way that we have this okay in place of b because b is any element so in place of b i can have a b also so that's how i get this is equal to m a b okay so now i have proved the Uh, that first result in its entirety for any n 
now we can start proving our actual result. Okay. Finally, we prove this. NAMB is equal to NMAB. Here also there will be two parts. We first prove this for non-negative integers n and any integer m. For this we apply induction on n keeping m fixed. So that means uh, the first value of n will be 0. We have zero a m b. Now m is any integer, positive, negative or 0, that does not matter. 0 a m b is equal to 0 mb which is equal to 0